double A minus, one notch below Abu Dhabi, and you say there's a strong influence from Abu Dhabi, but no explicit support. So is this why you have a double A minus? There is no explicit support from Abu Dhabi. Is that the explanation for the differential? Well, I mean, first of all, just to highlight um, the rating that we give uh, the UAE is a very high rating. It indicates very high, quali uh, high, uh, very high credit quality. Um, indeed, the rating for Abu Dhabi is one notch higher. Um, and uh, indeed, that is because, to some extent, because the, the linkage we see and we make between the assets that Abu Dhabi has and the UAE is um, somewhat, somewhat distant. It's true that the UAE does not have a full claim on the assets of um, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, of Abu Dhabi and particularly the assets of of Adia. And at that high rating level, not having a full claim, ha not having a guarantee on those assets is um, is an important uh, important element. Nonetheless, uh, there are quite a number of other elements to the rating that also support the rating. It's not all about um, yeah. Abu Dhabi support. So the relatively high uh, uh, high uh, high level of of, uh, of um, GDP per capita, the um, relatively low level mm -hmm. of debt across the the UAE um, are also certainly supporting factors. Uh, how soon do you think that the United Arab Emirates is going to issue a federal bond? Clearly, the train is is moving fast. Um, do you have any particular bet, as it were? Yeah, we we, we don't uh, have have a, a clear indication of when that might be happening. Um, there is a clear intention that um, they should be coming. The intention is driven to a significant extent, and that's quite interesting by the desire to develop a yield curve. So it's this this whole exercise is driven much less by some urgent financing need and need to finance a deficit. Um, instead, it's much more about a, a, a development rationale of developing a yield curve that then also allows GIEs and, and the private sector to issue more e easily in, in domestic markets. Jans, you talk about uh, the lack of um, sort of claim, as it were, on Abu Dhabi and on Adia. Can I just ask you, in regards to Adia, do you expect Adia to play a bigger role in the federal budget in 2020, 2021? And if so, how much would they contribute? I, I would say there wouldn't be a, a, any any difference in how Adia plays into the federal government. That really that role has really not not changed. Um, there are transfers from Abu Dhabi to the uh, to the federal level, but um, Adia does not have a role. Adia's role is much more abstract and and in a sense remote in that it provides a very important backstop for Abu Dhabi first and foremost and secondly also for the UAE in case of a really significant deterioration of of um, of conditions um, the the access for the UAE to Adia is just at this stage not not necessary and um, and it's certainly also not necessary for the purposes of uh, why they are currently intending to issue debt, which is not related to uh, to money raising, it is related to to financial development and establishing a yield curve. Uh, Jan says your view that a 9.7 percent of GDP debt ceiling is too high, and what can they do to ameliorate that? Um, Clearly, a level of 10% of um, debt of GDP on its own is very low by, by any standards. You need to consider that, that, that the federal government is not the only gov government. As you know, the Emirates have already accumulated debt and in some cases quite substantial debt. So the uh, UAE as a whole are, in fact, quite leveraged in, in several respects, in, in the sense that uh, some, some emirates have accumulated quite a bit of debt. 
And almost more importantly, some government-related enterprises have accumulated quite a bit of, uh, of debt. And so um, what we need to consider when we consider the creditworthiness of the UAE is the ensemble of the debt of the federal government, the debt of the Emirates, and as a contingent liability, the debts of the government-related enterprises. And, and so um, when you consider this, this roughly 10% of GDP um, current ceiling, which in, in a sense is is really defined in in net terms in any in any case, um, needs to be always considered mm -hmm. in the context of the debt already issued by by the other parts of the overall UAE government. Yeah, and we are all trying to grapple with what a vaccine might mean when it will be delivered. You have growth numbers in here for the economy to contract by nearly seven percent this year. The non-oil part of the economy by more than 6%. With the arrival of a vaccine, let's say, in the second half of next year, would that measurably or could that risk a serious change in your view and projection? Is the risk now tilted to the upside if a vaccine arrives in the second half of next year? Um, so for, first and foremost, it's important to know that that the range of risks, uh, risk around forecast for next year, of course, are much higher than they would normally be. We are expecting around around two percent growth next next year, um, and uh, yeah, there, there may well be some upside risks um, from from a vaccine. But um, the implications for the UAE as a whole with significant dependence on hydrocarbons via Abu Dhabi is, of course, um, not, not that, that dominant, all the more because the pressure on public finances will probably continue. So uh, it, it's not that, um, uh, that, that, uh, that um, fiscal policy could be coming, becoming much more much easier. There are um, accumulated problems in the real estate sector. Um, so a really dramatic departure from that growth forecast as at this stage, I still find relatively unlikely. Uh, but again, the, the uncertainties around forecast right now are really high.